This week on Sail Away, is it possible for a lifestyle to be bipolar? We start off taking full advantage of the cruiser's schedule. This is how we should do all of our boat tasks. Get up in the morning, knock them out by about 10, 10, 30, and then have brunch and Bloody Marys. Then roll right into dealing with yet another catastrophic setback. So we have no computers now. It's a nightmare, frankly. I don't really know how to be upbeat about this, but we'll try. But soon, a little rescue mission by Lauren reminds us what an amazing neighborhood we live in. It's just really cool. You'll see eight, nine-year-old kids out dinging around with their friends, going back from boat to boat. Just the freedom. It's just like being in a neighborhood where you hop on your bike to go see what your buddy's up to. And we wrap it up with good friends joining us for a hash. First time hasher! All right, good afternoon, hasher. Run, run, run. A hash that ends up being much more challenging than expected. <laughs> and a lot more rewarding. All right. All right. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. I've said before that life is still life no matter where you live it. Meaning you will never escape the ups and downs. But cruising life has the strange effect of amplifying those experiences on both ends of the spectrum. It's 11 o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. And over the last few months, that effect has felt more profound than ever. It's gonna be a proper brunch too. Do we have bacon and eggs? Well, I mean, it's not gonna be that proper, but we got Bloody Mary mix. Ah. Who doesn't eat brunch on a random Thursday with Bloody Marys? You do when you're on a boat. That's what happens. Outside. Bloody Mary time. Okay, Rivers. Stop reading your book. Why? Go eat pancakes. The first way that I would help you. The first wither without you. So the, it's a, a Minecraft book. Yeah. This is how we should do all of our boat tasks. Get up in the morning, knock them out by about 10, 10, 30, and then have brunch and Bloody Marys. That is motivation. Yeah. I'm drinking soup. I know. Listen, <laughs> spicy vodka vegetable soup, <laughs> chill. Rivers, put that book down. Get out here and eat your breakfast at noon. <laughs> We're all sorts of backwards. But a simple setback on land can be a catastrophe out here. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm sorry that lately we seem to whine and complain a lot about all the things that have gone wrong and all the difficulties that we've had. We try to make our videos and show everybody like all the stuff that happens and you know when you live on a boat full-time it's it's not vacation anymore it can be we have amazing fun and we do things like fix a sail bag and then have a bloody mary brunch at 11 o'clock just because because we can but man i just don't understand why does everything seem to just go wrong or give you trouble at the same time or just one thing after the other we have been down a computer for two months now and we've been getting by with just lauren's computer and it's it's worked pretty well we're very lucky to have two good good laptops on board but this one accidentally developed a crack in the screen and now this is all we have so we have no computers now. You know, if you haven't been down to Grenada or a lot of the islands down here, it might be kind of hard to kind of grasp how hard it is to get a hold of something like that. Like, 
we don't have the money to buy a brand new computer. We'd already decided, okay, we go to the US, we can get a couple of pretty good MacBooks used that are a few years old for reasonably cheap. And we'd already resolved, okay, we're just, we're gonna budget, you know, X amount of money and buy two new computers. But down here, I mean, you can buy new and they're way more than they cost in the States. There's not like an eBay, this is not a huge population for one thing, so there's not like an eBay with tons of computers for sale, refurbished units or anything like that. You can't have things shipped into the country without a long delay and paying about, it's something like 30% tax to bring anything in that you bought outside. We're just kind of screwed right now. But maybe we can run this through an external monitor. Bless you. The problem being, I don't know, you know, we would need an external monitor and an adapter to plug it in. I don't actually know if it would pop up enough info on that monitor automatically that we could configure everything to be nothing on this monitor. You can plug in an external monitor, but you need your first monitor to <laughs> make everything go where you want it to go. Uh, and we can't do that. So I don't know if that would work. We, we happened to have a car for a few days. Uh, our good friends on Elation, they had a car for a month and they left it for us to use for a few days. Um, just as a nice gesture, kind of a birthday present for Lauren. Her birthday's Monday, so. so we have a car to use for a few days. So yeah, we're gonna go downtown to one of the computer stores we know and just see if they have external monitors. It's a nightmare, frankly. This is um, one of those worst case scenarios that I'd never figured we'd have to deal with because we, we have two computers. And so if a computer goes down, we've always got a backup, right? Nope. We don't have a backup for the backup. I don't really know how to be upbeat about this, but we'll try. We almost always have at least an upside when something else goes wrong. This time, we got a car, and that helps a lot. <laughs> try to solve this problem instead of being sort of trapped, unable to get around looking for alternatives, you know. So, I'm gonna go with glass half full on that one. How do they get um, cars from different countries to other On row rows? Row Yeah, the container ships that only carry cars and they're called row rows because you roll them on and roll them on. Yeah, yeah get that on camera. What? It just scratched his butt. I was walking down the street. Good timing. <laughs> this hopeful solution was definitely a Hail Mary. We'd already investigated every other possibility of replacing it, but our requirements are just a little too specific, and fixing it was immediately out due to both price and time frame. Without a sufficient working computer within the next couple of days, our work and our income would be dead in the water. Good morning. Got a beautiful morning out here today. It tends to rain early in the morning almost every day, so we got a little wet. So I just got done kind of cleaning up and drying things off. It's about 6.30 maybe. It's nice out here this time of day. We had a long day yesterday, but uh, I think we got everything under control. Oh man, the computer thing. I gotta admit, I was freaking out about that. It's one of those things, you're out here living this life on a sailboat, you know. It'd be great to think you wouldn't have to worry about computers and internet and all that stuff, but, you know, the reality is without those items, we don't make a living at all. For me especially, not only do I not make a living without a computer, you know, oh, well, you just got to take a month off and get it sorted out. No, man, I lose my relationships with the publishers I work with and the authors I work with because I don't turn in the work that I contracted to do on time, and it's a very schedule-based business, you know. Books are being released, and they want the audiobook out with the book, you know, 
not having a computer to work on is not just an inconvenience or it's not just me not getting paid it's it's me losing future work potentially and my name thankfully man we we got it sorted out i, I wasn't sure it was going to happen it, we, we got that monitor yesterday and got everything plugged in and uh it took me a while to figure out how on earth to get the second screen to work because my computer was not set up to automatically mirror any additional screens and without the original screen to work from you know you can't really set that but a little bit of help from the internet I figured out how to get there all's well that I won't say ends well but turned out well I'm gonna get some coffee on then probably hide away in my work hole for the rest of the day the new studio setup with what is to me a massive monitor and now I actually have to uh, work on yeah go in there and do some work this is how it rains in Grenada these days mm -hmm. full sun just keeping us on our toes just enough to make us close all of our windows Lauren and Zeke just got back from uh, their walk while I was working, but I guess Lauren's going on a rescue mission now. Uh, I don't know who she's rescuing now. And just like that, with Lauren towing a bunch of our friends' kids back to their boats, suddenly this feels like the best life in the world again. Well, maybe our kid was in there. No, it's just all the ladies. That's just another thing that's great about not like just the cruising community, but here or places like this. I mean, look how contained all of this is. There's reefs out here with a constant current and waves pretty much coming in. And if you go through those anywhere but the channel, you basically stand up over there. Wind is generally pushing everybody this way and everybody knows each other. So, I mean, you see kids in dinghies cruising around all over the place, and it's fine. There's always people around, especially during the middle of the day. They weren't upset, they weren't panicked. It's just really cool, like, you'll see eight, nine-year-old kids out dinghying around with their friends, going back from boat to boat, and it's just this awesome sense of freedom. And as parents, it's not that big a concern. The kids are really, responsible and there's so many parents and so many boats around there's just always people out it's going to be really cool when rivers is a couple years older and and he'll be able to take the dinghy to see buddies or hop on the paddleboard and just paddle over to a boat where a friend is just the freedom it's just like being in a neighborhood where you hop on your bike to go see what your buddy's up to all right rescue mission complete they uh had made cupcakes and we're selling them out to the the charter boats out there and ran out of gas so <laughs> went and got them but I got a free cupcake out of it so I think I come out ahead why don't you look sporty <laughs> oh you need the slow pan up I get the slow pan up uh, yeah it wasn't that slow we may look like we're athletic because we are headed to a hash we didn't think we were gonna get to do one nope. this trip but here we are with the car and a pack of friends that don't mind being crammed into a tiny car. It's gonna be good. Rivers looks sporty too, but he always looks sporty. Oh no. No, I don't. Well, tie it. I can't tie it. I can't tie it. to work on that. Hashes are run all over the world, but Grenada is famous for them. Their organized runs through the jungle on a freshly cut trail, different every time. We ran two during our last stay here, and the stars aligned perfectly to fit in one this year. First time, Asher! All right, good afternoon, Hashes. So today, we are going to be following the trail. The trail is marked with lots of shredded white paper. 
those blocks of shredded white paper will take you away from here, across the beautiful countryside of Grenada. Can we have the hair for today? The hair is a person who sets the trail. The hair is Kinsey. The trail is a bit challenging. Right? As you can see, it's a bit wet. It's wet, sticky. Be careful. So there are three trails. Runners, the two walkers, long walker, short walker, advising the persons who have issues, the knee and so on, to take the short walker. Right, because the longer one might be challenging. Has it started? <laughs> Run, run, run. Oh boy. Nice, nice. <laughs> Sasha. Oh, you, took the, you took the running side. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> you guys chose the running trail, hey? Did we? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> We're working out. That's what you're going for. Okay. Yeah, keep running now. This is a running trail. You gotta run whenever you can. Ah, boy, you got it. Good job. Climbing up out of the depths of the jungle. Oh, we didn't get much footage of that for a good reason. And we're running again. Parts of the trail turned out to be far steeper than the other two we ran before. And in combination with the mud, the going was extremely slow and difficult. Far more than we could really show on video. Cool. Oh, paper over there. Yeah, good one, Laura. Good eye, good eye. Very clever. Rivers plus Lauren and Jordan from SV Passat proved themselves to be very capable hashers. Is the halfway point for Police More? All members of the pack are accounted for. We're all here. Listening. That's what they do in the books I read. Yeah. They glisten. <laughs> all the ones you actually like read out, like they the words. Yeah. Oh, and the ones he just reads for fun. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we're almost there? <laughs> Not getting any less muddy though. <sighs> Got a boo boo. One last slip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so close. Ooh, here's the school. All right, our kid's somewhere up there. Yeah, I hope so. That was freaking treacherous. I mean, no joke. There was one person with a blown out knee, a lady who could not put any weight on it. And somebody was, a couple people were trying to kind of pack her out. And they were uh, sending some of the official people to go back in and help. And another guy had his shoulder dislocated and his leg was all bloody. And frankly, I'm counting us pretty lucky that we have none of those injuries. because well. Lauren took a thorn under the fingernail. Yeah, Lauren's butt is evidence is it real bad? of how muddy and slick it was. Despite all the challenges, we all felt really lucky to have done it. And the crew of SV Passat got a proper Hasher Virgin welcome. All the first time hashers. That was the longest one mile I have ever run in my life. <laughs> right, small up. We want to make sure we catch everybody in the frame. Hash, you say honor. So on the count of three, you put your hands in the air and you shout a big honor. Right? On three. One, two, three. Honor! All right, Hatsha, let's give everyone an applause. Come on! Oh, that was a free bear, by the way. That was a free bear. I know, our kid just got slashed at me. That's all right. Sorry! What did you think, man? Don't run away. That was funny. It was raining. It 
was not raining. <laughs>